some of the camp stuff, letting in little kids, not following the rules that I gave. I'm not happy. All right, so the first thing is that um, we are, what are we doing here? We're doing the Sifa and Mosuf. Let's hear it. Uh, Protein Sheikh, did you do your stuff? I'm not qualified. Not qualified. Uh, Wissam, give me an example. I beg your pardon? Al Mu'allimu al Dhaki. But I asked for examples from what you memorize in the Quran. Right? We thought you uh, want us to make the Quran the Good. Alright. That's good. And they're in the place of, they are m- m- uh, not to what? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Which is part of the Jara Majroor. Bismillah ar Rahman ar Rahim. Right? Next. Think. Gotta think. <laughs> we got like uh, how many years of education here? I got one. We got ter- this guy's on a terminal degree. That's a mubtada khabar. Can you tell me Noun adjective. Noun adjective. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What's the whole ayah? Or just the, the beginning? Yeah, the end of the ayah. Okay, yeah the all of those. Yeah. All of those. Right? Wa huwa al Azizu al Hakim. Al Azizu al Hakim. Correct. Wa Allahu al Malik al Quddus al Salam al Mu'min al Muhim. Wa Allahu al Ladi la ilaha illa huwa. Al Malik al Quddus al Salam al Mu'min al Muhim al Azizu al Jabbar al Mutakabbiru. Right? And sometimes. There's an interruption, and then that nat continues. Mm-hmm. Okay, so basically you get the idea, right? You get the idea of the sifa mosuf. You don't need to actually go anymore, but you you get the idea of a sifa and the mosuf. So let's open up our risala here, and where we left off is at mustaqarul arwahi. Mustaqarrul Arwahi. By the way, we won't be able to stream tomorrow. I have my uh, some babysitting duties actually, and the rule is that no one in the camp can have uh, kids under seven here. So uh, I gotta follow the rules, right? So I can't come in actually. وَأَنَّ الشُّهَدَاءَ أَحْيَاءٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ يُرْزَقُونَ وَأَنَّ الشُّهَدَاءَ Okay. That the martyrs, shuhada, is mansub bi anna. Ahya'un khabar. The sentence is, this is actually a following, following because the, uh, when you get a modern publication, they make the breaks that sometimes the author didn't make. And oftentimes, one of the matters that you notice about uh, the Arabic literature is that Sometimes you can have a section. It's one sentence, right? It, there's no concept like just stop the sentence here. That rarely happens. But w- what is the sentence stoppage? Right? It's not like they didn't have. No, they did. It's called wawul isti'naf. Wawul isti'naf. Which means it's a well that this marks the beginning of the sentence. That's why when you look at some speech and you're like, it, the sentence begins with and, and, and. It's not and, it's actually wa'ul well, isti'naf. Well, well, okay? So here, the... Um, all of this is going back to the original statement that he says, belief is obligatory. Belief is obligatory, and the editors put in the breaks. Okay? Here he says, وَأَنَّ الشُّهَدَاءَ أَحْيَاءٌ So the sentence is, الشُّهَدَاءُ أَحْيَاءٌ Martyrs are alive. Wa'anna is harf nas renders a shuhada mansub bi wa shuhada a anna shuhada a ahya un khabar. They are alive. Inda rabbihim yurzaqun. With their Lord being given sustenance. So they are living a life 
which we may not be aware of, but they are alive. Uh, obviously, not a life that is uh, similar to our earthly life, but they are living a different life. عند ربهم يرزقون with their Lord. Okay, being given sustenance. Okay, as shuhada to give it is three types. There are three types of martyrs. A shahid al khulas, a complete shahid. Okay. A complete shaheed. Who is that? Who is the complete shaheed? That is someone who dies in the battlefield. Okay? Dies in the battlefield, of course, with a sincere intention. Some, not everyone who dies in the battlefield enters Jannah. Prophet ﷺ spoke about a man who fought so that his uh, people could say he fought. And another man who fought but stole from the stole from the uh, spoils so his he didn't have the ikhlas he had an ulterior motive okay he ruined it the martyr who dies in the battlefield is not washed he is merely preyed upon okay and he's buried buried and preyed upon with his so that he's resurrected with his uh, uniform okay so this is the martyr that he dies the death of a martyr and we know that he died that death. We know that we can never say so-and-so is a martyr. We can only say he died the death of a martyr. Right? So that's one thing. The second type of shaheed is someone who died the death of a martyr but is washed. And who are those? The one who dies with a, his stomach imploded, his intestines imploded. Right? A burst in his stomach. Maptoon. Then the one who a building fell on him. Then the one who drowned. Then the one who was burned. Okay? So these, and the one who died defending his wealth. So, to die defending your own money. Someone tries to rob your car, you die. That's martyrdom, right? Because your wealth, that's haq, it's your right. If you die defending someone else's wealth, would you be, everyone would praise him, right? So someone died defending his own wealth, right? Because no wealth is truly only yours, Right? If you have wealth that's yours, and you have no parents, no children, no siblings that you take care of, you still pay zakah, right? You pay, you pay zakah. You buy and sell. Other people benefit. So wealth is valued even if it's, you think it's all mine. It's not all yours. You spend it. You pay zakat on it. So therefore, it's actually everyone's wealth, right? So it's the image of it's my wealth, but everyone's, it's not everyone's wealth in ownership, but I should say everyone is benefiting. That's why Allah says, وَفِي أَمْوَالِهِمْ حَقٌّ لِلسَّائِلِ وَالْمَعْلُومِ In their wealth is a portion, a right, for the one who begs, and one who uh, uh, asks in the zakah, given zakah. So, these are the people who die the death of a martyr. However, they are washed and buried. Okay, first category is prayed upon, but not washed. The third category of martyrs are only known to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are the most. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, أَكْثَرُ شُهَدَاء أُمَّتِي أَصْحَابُ الْفُرَشِ Meaning, the majority of martyrs, they die on their beds. And who is that? The man or woman who spent their life serving the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It so happened that the capacity of their service was not a war. Right? The capacity of their service was civil in society. But Allah sees that this individual has given his morning and evening and all of his prime effort of his life for Allah's sake. Therefore Allah Azza wa Jal treats them like martyrs even though we do not. We can't even say he died the death of a martyr because he died in his bed like everyone else did. Or he died in the manner that everyone else did. Okay, It's not literalism in the bed. See, this is where literalism again, it doesn't work, because what happens if someone like that dies uh, any other death, uh, you know, not in his bed, okay, were you going to say that, no, he has to die in his bed, so no, that's an example where literally, where there is um, a word that is meaning something larger, meaning even the one who dies the most comfortable, soft death, he could die uh, in a car accident, he could die. There, do you remember the East African Imam who died giving the khatra? He literally died sitting on the step before Salat al Isha. He was talking, right? And literally, he shut his eyes and died right there. How about a Sheikh Abdul Hamid Kishk who died 
praying the two rak'ahs in his house before going out for Jum'ah. Right? He died in sujood. So he didn't die in his bed. So the st- statement of the Prophet ﷺ who dies in his bed, right, means even this most easy and comfortable of death. The easy, most easy and comfortable death is to die while you're asleep. So you go to sleep soundly and you don't even experience any of the pains of death. And Allah Adam, we don't know actually what they experience, but uh, at least for our outward image, it doesn't look like they experience anything. So these are the three categories of the martyrs, of the shuhada. That there is a shaheed that is the, that pure shaheed died in the battlefield, okay? And he's not washed and he's just prayed upon. And then the one who dies the death of a martyr but is washed and prayed upon. And then the one who dies in his bed only Allah knows that that's a martyr. Are all martyrs' bodies incorruptible? Um... Allahu Adam about the rules or the parameters I should say of the incorruptibility of bodies many people have testified over the time that these martyrs whose graves have been dug up accidentally in construction sites and whatnot, or unmarked graves so they're burying someone and they hit someone else that they many many stories that are told that people have seen such a martyr still bleeding in Medina al Munawwara when they were expanding the masjid of the Prophet the crane the, the not the crane the um, uh, caterpillar was digging and it actually hit metal they unearthed a soldier in armor bleeding still bleeding right and that's one of the stories that some of the um, uh, people who can who can be trusted with stories in other words, like scholars who know how to transmit information and verify it, that they actually da- found him, they unearthed him, and they placed him somewhere else. So he was from a bygone era, wearing ar- armor from a bygone era, and the um, uh, machine that was digging hit him, and they saw him. So these are stories, right? So, uh, of course, the you know, uh, authenticity of the stories have to be verified, but there are so many of them that the prophets and shuhada and of course the siddiqeen is a rank above the shuhada right quran says man nabiyin wa siddiqeen wa shuhada in order nabi siddiq shaheed siddiq is a higher level of a shaheed okay a shaheed he can be a completely normal individual but on that moment entered the battlefield and died or that moment drowned or that moment was burned down or that moment, okay, someone was about to rob him and died the death of a shaheed. So uh, there are many, there's an incident of a Sahabi who went in, uh, he didn't even know who these people were at the Battle of Badr, or one of the battles, I can't recall which one. He said, What's, who are these two parties? They said, well, he, this party, is one of a man who claims prophecy, right? And that's his enemies, those are his enemies. And he said, well, what does he claim? He said that there's one God, that he's the prophet and that you should keep your kinship ties and eat pure food and not oppress and give charity to the poor. He said, I believe that. He didn't even say like the technical shahed. Like he just expressed, oh, I believe that. So uh, he said, they said that, he said that, uh, and what is he rewarding those who die? He said, automatic Jannah. He said, so that, therefore, the, what's holding me back from Jannah immediately are these dates that he was eating for lunch? He threw them ran and died never ultimate never said the technical shahada never prayed never made wudu and he's a shaheed right so he did nothing so that's why the shaheed that's his characteristic the siddiq however is following in the hadith of wilaya which is he uh, draws near to allah by obligations prohibitions the nawafir and so he's giving his life right in in sanctifying his his self in other words cleaning purifying his soul so he's a level above and they said that as well when some of the graves of such individuals were uh, dug up uh, by accident or uh, for some other reason that they found them intact and of course everything that a siddiq or a shaheed will receive in the afterlife the prophet will receive more than that right why by logic all of the deep 
if I if someone teaches someone how to recite Quran from scratch, right, and there's no other teacher, only one person taught him to read Quran. Every letter that person recites will be in the scale of this teacher. And then if that person teaches someone to recite, then him and his teacher are receiving that reward, like a pyramid scheme, down. So, who's the first teacher? Prophet Sallallahu right? Prophet Sallallahu So all of the deeds of the Ummah are really for him. So all of their rewards are by, by, by logically, he will receive them too. So uh, he will not receive them because they did them, he received them because he taught them. So the uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's maqam is very important to be aware of, is superior than anything that you read. There's no Muslim who will ever have anything in Akhirah that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam won't have. So after death, if the shuhada are ahya'un inda rabbihim yurzaqun, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is hayun inda rabbihim yurzaq. Right? Hayatun, right? Yaliqu bi maqamihi. Right? A life that is suitable to his maqam, his noble rank. Okay? وَأَرْوَاحَ أَهْلِ السَّعَادَةِ بَاقِيَةٌ نَاعِمَةٌ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ The people are in, in general divided into two camps. Those who are felicitous and those who are miserable. Okay? What happens if someone is felicitous but has problems? Like in general they're happy in the deen, their iman is sound, their ibad is sound, their heart is pure, they, or, or, their, or I should say that their heart is serene. Right? They feel the serenity of Iman. But they have slip-ups. We call that a nafs al It has slip-ups. So it's pure milk, but there is some defects in it. We call that a nafs al And ultimately, sickness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, sickness, trials, and tribulations before death will purify him of those. Wa arwaha, this word arwah, is mansub by anna the anna 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 shuhada kada wa kada wa anna al arwaha kada wa kada here you have an idafa anna arwaha ahl al saadati a three part idafa the souls of the people of felicity okay ahli and al saadati have the two kasras okay because of this and arwah is mansub by anna baqiyatun there's the khabar Okay, is baqiyatun na'imatun sifan mawsuf baqiyatun na'imatun which is it is uh, baqiya or you could say it's mat it's at baqiya and na'ima it is alive okay remaining it's not this you don't disappear off the face you don't disappear like you're just non-existent no you exist after death na'ima it's enjoying it's in an enjoyment, a state of enjoyment, of joy. إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ Until the day of resurrection. So the paradise of the believer begins immediately upon his death. But it's not the same paradise in two ways. Number one, it's not the paradise of the garden. And number two, it's soul without body. It's a joy of soul without body. Okay? إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ جَارُ مَجْرُورُ وَأَنَّ أرواح أهل الشقاوة معذبة اليوم الدين. Same construction, but that the souls of the people of misery are in torture until the day of resurrection. Okay. All right. Do you want to read one more section, or you want to stop here? Because I like to keep them short, personally speaking. But if you guys want to keep going, we've been going for twenty minutes. Let's. Uh, what do you say? I'm good. Just do one more section real quick. Fitnatul Qabr. It's very important to recognize the importance of believing that our paradise and hell, our misery or our joy, is immediate upon death. And he says here, وَأَنَّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Again, okay. الْمُؤْمِنُونَ becomes mansub bi'an. It's mansub to become al-mu'minina. وَأَنَّ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يُفْتَنُونَ فِي قُبُورِهِمْ They are tested in their graves. Okay? They are tested in their graves. يُفْتَنُونَ فِي قُبُورِهِمْ وَيُسْأَلُونَ And they are asked. They are asked about 
as all Muslims are taught, who is their Lord? Who is your Prophet? What is your book? Okay. يُثَبِّتُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ Okay. Allah Azza wa Jal makes firm those who believed. الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا بِالْقَوْلِ الثَّابِتِ With the correct answer. Right? فِي الْحَيَةِ الدُّنْيَا وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ So who is it that will answer properly? The one who answers properly in the dunya. In other words, by having taqwa in the dunya, a person will be able to answer properly. So the idea of the uh, the idea that uh, people will uh, not be will not be asked anything. Why is this part of aqidah? Because some of the Mu'tazila said it's not in the Quran, right? So therefore we won't believe in it. However, uh, it is in the hadith. Okay, and therefore the ulama of aqidah intentionally put in the questioning in the grave for this reason because uh, some of the mu'tazila didn't believe in it okay and, uh, and these angels are called uh, mulkar and nakir their category see for example jibrail mikail israfil Israel. those are names malik ridwan these are names mulkar and nakir raqib and atid are categories of angels right Categories of angels. So there are many. Munkar and Nakir are many. This is one of the opinions. Right? So it's that everyone who was put in their grave will be experiencing two different angels. Their, their, uh, the name of their position is Munkar and Nakir. Wallahu ta'ala alam. If that's accurate or not. But that's the statement of some of the ulama. Al malaikatu al hafadatu. Wa anna ala al ibadi jarum majrur hafadatan. Okay, alright. That's the mubtada here. Mansub bi anna. Wa anna hafadatan ala al ibad. If you remove the anna, since the statement would be hafadatun ala al ibad. Right? Or al hafadatu ala al ibad. And then the khabar is yaktubuna a'malahum wa la yasqutu shay'um min dhalika an ilmi rabbihim. Yaktubuna a'malahum. That would be the khabar. And it itself is a fi'al mudara, mansub by the wa- the, the noon. Okay. Wa uh, in the noon, uh, the noon. Sorry, and amalahum is the maful bihi, their deeds. Amalahum. Wala yasqutu. Wala yasqutu. This is fi'al mudara, and this is la al nafi. Remember, we said there's two la la that prohibits and la that negates. The la that prohibits is a jazima. La tafal. Don't do this. La uh, yasqutu nafi is a negation does not affect the grammar so the fi'al mudara here stays mudara la yaskutu shay'un fa'il min dhalika jaru majrur an ilmi rabbihim jaru majrur ilmi rabbihim is mudaf mudaf ilayh okay an ilmi is majrur bi'an and rabbihim is majrur ala ilm or, or the adafa construction with ilm so the kasra on the ba indicates the khafd Okay, when Al Al Ibadi have any tabuna all the deeds are written. It is said that even when they don't know the ruling of a new deed that a human being does, they ask. So human beings do actions that are new. And the the uh, uh, angels don't know the ruling of the action. So they ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when when human beings do something on this earth and we don't know the ruling, right? Our questioning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of the ruling is by going through the process uh, of usul, sourcing, uh, ifta, and then judgment, and then uh, see if what the ajumhur of ulama can be upon, etc. Um, it's said that when Iblis whistled for the first time, the malaika had never heard anyone whistle before, right? Because no one whistled before. So they asked Allah Azza wa Jal, what is the ruling on this whistling? Right? What is it even? They don't even know what to call it. So Allah taught them the name of it and its ruling. And He said, Uktubu tasfir wa ala Allahi tafsir. Which means, write whistling tasfir. And, it's, uh, and the, explain, the ruling on it will be from Allah. Tas, uh, tafsir. The explanation. What are you whistling for? Are you whistling at someone? Then it's a sin. Are you whistling 
You made a whistling sound on accident? Neutral. A whistling, just your board? So whistling in our shara, all blowing actions have been made uh, disliked. Whistling is disliked. And blowing on food is disliked because it's dirty. Blowing where necessary, such as on a fire, if someone's cooking, is accepted. But blowing on food is not hygienic. It's makru. Blowing on... Uh, Whistling is also makruh because it's from the af'al of Iblis. Likewise, sitting on your stomach, laying down on the stomach is makruh. It's from the af'al of Iblis. Okay? Many people believe that sitting like this is makruh, but a siyuti has a, gives us a hadith and he says, no, it's actually not because we have a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ who's leaning on his stick like this and it says, and his fingers were mashbuk. Right? So uh, some people consider that to be a makruh, but it's actually... Uh, not according to Siyuti. Right? What did you say? Someone used to say that. So I do it on purpose now. Right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. That's why you got to have El before you command it for a bit. Right? Okay. So this is where, uh, that's where an example of Malaika not knowing an action. Subhanallah. Mm, yeah. So these afal of Iblis, that's why blowing on the food is very well known. And why is it that it's a sign, right, of education? Like some education is not. Why? Because any rule that has to do with eating really indicates what kind of background a person has, mm. right? Why? Because you eat every day at the table. And many of the ulama talked about how so much education occurs at the table, eating dinner. Um, I always love the story that a sheikh came, sent his, a, 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 a man sent his son to a tekka, or whatever they call it, in um, Istanbul, where they live and they eat and they study all day and all night. So the, the, the dad came back six months later to ask what his son has learned, right? So he said, son, what books are you reading? He said, the sheikh hasn't given me any books. He said, what le lessons are you attending? He said, I don't attend any lessons. Okay. So he said, then what do you do all day? He says, I, he's got me in the kitchen. Right? Got me in the kitchen. So uh, the, the man came all furious. I'm, I'm paying you people. Right? A stipend here. Okay. My son to live with you all. Where, where, he's not taking any lessons. You're making him work? Right? He says, yes, you sent me a boy who has no manners, right? So I'm teaching him manners first, right? How, am I, how is he teaching him manners? By cooking, serving, and eating. All day, cooking, so you learn how to handle the food properly, right? Serving, serving the food, lowers your ego, you be of service. And eating, eating itself has the manners. Don't eat with your left hand, eat with your right hand. Don't blow on the food, eat from what's in front of you. Pass the food around first but until everyone's eaten, then you eat. Don't take the last piece. Okay? All the, how about the iman involved? The du'as. The du'a of eating. The giving the shukr for eating. All these things, right? So, so much is learned just from eating. Okay? So much is learned just from eating. Yep. Is this sunnah to eat salt before you eat? I never heard that before. Never heard that before. Is the same person who said this? Mm -hmm. yeah, I, that. I mean, I never heard that. It's sunnah to, to, drink, to eat fruit before eating. Right? That's actually a sunnah. To eat fruit before eating. Right? That's a sunnah. And it's a sunnah to drink a little bit after you eat. That's actually for a health purpose. Okay. So some of the sunnah are maqul and ma'na. It's known, understood why. Right? Because when you eat, you got the food. If you throw water on there, it will just slow down the digestion. It's not going to kill you but, uh, or harm you, but it will slow down the digestion. That's why people talk about that. It's not haram to do that. Um, so, وَأَنَّ مَلَكَ الْمَوْتِ And that the angel of death يَقْبِضُ الْأَرْوَاحَ بِإِذْنِ رَبِّهِ And that the angel of death, who is whom? Israel. Israel. وَأَنَّ مَلَكَ الْمَوْتِ مُضَافْ مُضَافْ إِلَيْهِ Right there. يَقْبِضُ Ibni is part of the Jaru Majroor and Rabbihi Mudafan Ibni Rabbihi Mudaf Mudafile. Next section is on the Sahaba and I'll give you a 
story about the Sahaba before we get into it. Imam al-Sha'arani has a book in which he narrates a story of one of the mashayikh of his time. And that sheikh, who he gives his name, had a colleague, another sheikh, who was an excellent man. The man died. And as often happens so that we can learn, people see their friends and relatives and people in their dreams after their death that gives them some confirmation, right, of the ghaybiyat that we believe in. Okay? And this man, he saw his friend, he was light-skinned, but he saw him covered in ash. Right? And he said to him, what happened? He said, what, how did you find is Islam the truth? He says, it's all true. He said, then you practiced it. So why is there ash all over your face? And then he whispered to him. He said, I used to compare and prefer some Sahaba over others. Right? And talk about them in this manner. I used to compare them. Right? So in this sense, Imam Sharani has a chapter in the Adab of Companionship, which I'll be teaching in Istanbul, which will also be uh, packaged as a pre-recorded uh, item. And he said that uh, that chapter says the prohibition on comparing Sahaba. Right? Comparing, he said, prohibition on comparing the Sahaba, much less disrespecting them. Right? Why? The Saha- comparing the Sahaba and not all you could do is state exactly what the Prophet said. That's it. Why? Did the Prophet have books? What is the product? What did the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam produce? He didn't, did he build homes? No. Did he build masajid? No. What did? He, what is his? What is his, the other of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Is the men, the Sahaba. So in judging the Sahaba, in comparing requires judgment. In judging the Sahaba, you're actually judging the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Just if I say, if Hamza wrote two essays, and I say this one's better than this, right? What am I judging? I'm judging Hamza, right? I can, we can judge equals. You can judge any person you want. It doesn't it has to have to mean anything, but you can. You can't judge the Messenger of Allah, right? You cannot judge the Messenger of Allah. So by judging the Sahaba and comparing the two and saying this is better than this one, you are actually passing a judgment on the work of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? So the, the Sahaba are his fruits. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah rabbil alameen.